Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz, and welcome to a special sneak peek look at Second Front, a game being developed by Hextraw Software and being published by Micropro Software. Now, this game is scheduled for release later in 2022. This is an advanced preview copy of a playtest version that's coming out later this month. So we're going to be able to kind of take a sneak peek behind the development of this game, and they've allowed us to look at anything that's present here. So special thanks to Micropro Software for allowing us to take a look at this and talk about this. Now, this this overview is going to be cut up into three different sections. First, we're going to take a step up moment and just talk a little bit about what type of game this is. Then we're going to look to get an idea of scope and scale. We're going to look in the garage where we get a chance to see the different types of units that are there. Then we're going to play the very first tutorial scenario. So by the time we're done with this, hopefully you'll have a sense as to whether this might be a game you want to add to your wish list as you follow the development as it nears release later this year. So what kind of a game is this? So if we take a step back moment, look at this, uh, this is a World War II tactical combat game. Each unit is a single vehicle, each unit's a single squad, each unit's a single officer. Now you may already have an idea of in your head of like, wait a second, that sounds very similar. Yes. Yeah. So the developer mentions a passion and experience with realistic and deep tabletop tactical board games. So I think if you're a fan of advanced squad leader tabletop board games, this might be a game you want to keep an eye on as for kind of a digital game that's going to capture that same level and nuance and depth of combat experience. I can think of a couple of other games that are currently out there in the digital realm. Lock and Load series, as well as Victory and Valor would fall in this type of genre of game. So that's kind of where the game sits. Now let's take a look at some of the core features before we jump in and take a look at the garage. So core features, full scenario editor, full map editor that's gonna be available. The core game looks to have forces from Russia, order of battle from Russia, Germany and the United States is kind of part of the core game. It talks about building off of this core game later and we'll talk about that more as we go forward. Um, there's gonna be campaigns, scenarios in addition kind of as part of this core game and the campaigns sound like they're going to be pretty cool so they're talking about 60 turns that start from day and go to night and very much emergent battles so they're not in any way scripted with an ai that can handle this type of nuance in combat so ambitious and quite exciting design parameters for this game now enough of looking at the splash screen behind me and me talking let's jump in and take a look at some of the stuff here is the garage, and the garage is where you can see the units. Currently, the game has over 200 different types of units. And this is one of the features that the game mentions in the design mirrors is talking about the accessibility of the game. An easy game to jump into and play, and yet it's a game with a lot of depth. And this, I think, kind of gives us an idea here. So I'm going to click on the bottom left right over my shoulder here where you have to see the German faction, and let's click on tanks. And we can see down here below, if I scroll along the bottom, we've got all of the German tanks that are available here. Now we can highlight here and further select by year, so 1945, and it changes which ones are available and things like that. But if we click on one of them here, let's find a pretty cool one that we could look at. Let's go to the end. Let's maybe take a look here at, ooh, how about um, right here. So here is a Panzer Camp Fragment Tiger E. And we can see it's down here. And what's really cool, it's kind of fun. You can move the turret up and down. You can button it down. You can move the machine gun around like that. You can add some passengers on the back. And then if we want to rotate the, the, the vehicle around, we can do that. Up here in the top right, though, this is where it starts to really get, I think, some of the depth in the game. So we can see all of the different variables and factors. It's smoke dispenser, the strength of its turret rear, turret side, turret front. Hull front, hull side, hull rear, its reload rate, its target size, the weapon length, 88 millimeter long. And then if you click on these down arrows, it gives you a history of the vehicle and how many were created in some of just the, the other little nuances and facts about the vehicle. Now we can also add, for example, let's add some uh, US vehicles. We could come in here and add, we got some anti-tank guns. So we could add the... Let's do 37 millimeter anti-tank good can come here and it gives us some rates and comparisons between the two things. We could add in a tank here. Let's put the M4. So we put it there and we can see the differences now in terms of armor that's evident on both of these. And then a lot of other factors. I'm not 100% sure yet what everything is. I've spent about an hour or two looking at the game so far. So just kind of diving in. But this is where you see we've got these kind of polygon models here that are relatively simple. So as you're going to see these as displayed on the combat map itself. But yet there's a ton of depth that sits behind the system. And 
pretty exciting. I mean, I think this, I mean, we can look at Russian vehicles here if we add some more here. So we have uh, self-propelled guns and things like that. We can see ISU-152. So there's a ton of stuff here, over 200 units in the game. I just love the way the kind of the counters and everything show up and the information that sits behind them. So with that being said, let's jump in now and play our very first scenario. So this is a tutorial and I played through this already. So I have a rough idea, I think, on what to do. This playtest version comes with five scenarios and kind of they unlock as you go forward. So I'm just gonna replay this first one that I've played a little bit here. This is called The Mill and this will give us an idea of what the map looks like. And now there are no vehicles in this one and there are no support weapons. So this is really basically some US forces going to try to take this let me close this out here because we don't really need this. They're going to try to take this structure here from the German forces that are there. So we have, we can see here, if I hover over this, I can click on this. This shows the German forces that are in this strong. We can see the NATO symbols up above it. This regular infantry, you can see an R there. So a lot of information above there. We can see in the top left, way up over my head, some of the characteristics, a range of eight for these units. And then we can see we've got some more German units holed up in this other structure to the right. And then we have some more Germans down here in the woods and on the road here. So our task with these American units is to take these, to take this output post here without looking at. Now, the way the tutorial mentions to start out, we're going to click up here on our units, the top part of the map, and we can see we have Sergeant Gonzalez and then two veteran squads here. Now, the problem is over here, if we look down here, we've got some units with exclamation marks on them. These are elite units, but exclamation means they are broken. So we're going to take Sergeant Gonzalez and just click on him. And then we're going to right click down here and he can run all the way over here. We're going to left click to exit, to execute it. And Sergeant Gonzalez is going to run over here. And now he's in the same here as the same hex as this elite squad here. And he can help them rally. Cool, right? So they're broken with morale. Now, the other thing the tutorial says, basically, it talks a little bit about how uh, defensive fire works. And it, it advises us here to take this veteran unit, uh, this veteran squad here. We're gonna have, we're gonna right click on this, basically these woods up here. So we're gonna have them draw fire. The idea is we're gonna have these two squads draw fire and then they have this squad up here in the open are going to go over the hedge, come right up here and try to close assault the building. So if everything goes well, we'll take the building. So we're gonna have these units move. We're gonna right click. You'll notice here that they can either run the top air or walk. And one of the tips is you want the units to walk because they're going to have better fire when they get to the end and stuff like this. Now we're going to take fire here and we're pinned. Okay, that's not too bad. That's okay because we want these units to take the fire. So we're going to advance our other squads, going to move up here. They're going to go forward and they're going to take fire too. And they are broken, which is, yeah, that's, you know, that happens. But now we've exhausted these units' defensive fire and we can take our squad here. We can advance them up to the side of the building. We've got a, a wall here to protect us from fire from this other structure. So we're gonna have them walk, not run. They're moving up. They've got a leader so they can go farther. And now we can have them fire right on this building. So hopefully we'll get some kind of a result. Yes, broken and the other one stood. So one squad broke and the other squad has it stood its ground. But we have an advanced combat phase coming up soon. So that's gonna help us here. The other thing we have up here in this windmill, and I should mention one of the cool things about the game, it's because 22 different types of terrain, 80 types of multi-level buildings, 70 unique dec decorations, and the multi-level buildings are all destructible. I mean, urban combat, that's cool. We combine that with like a 60 turn campaign that starts in the day and it goes all the way through the night. Sounds pretty cool. I didn't know much. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about this game before it got kind of available to access kind of this playtest version. But immediately it's kind of shot up my list of, wow, I am I'm pretty excited about this. I mean, this is fun. I'm looking forward to playing more and stuff like that. I also like the idea how it um, kind of rewards good tactics because I played this scenario, the tutorial on my own without looking at the tutorial and I get massacred. Then once I kind of figure out how to do the thing right, it was like it's gone a lot better. OK, so let's see if we can now we can. We can have this sniper fire over here. Let's just do that. I don't think it's going to get any kind of result, but maybe we can pin him down. Okay, we did pin him down. That's good. Now let's have our 
squad, they can't move very far. I'm not quite sure why they can't move very far. But we'll have them just walk up here. That's fine. I think probably because they don't have a leader, maybe? All right. So it looks like we've moved everybody. We've got our leader over here to try to rally this unit. We've got our troops ready for the close assault phase. We are going to end our move and fire phase. And now we're going to get ready for the fire phase, advance phase. Okay, they fired on us, but they were pinned. So our sniper made them duck their heads and that didn't work. Our unit routed down here. The Germans in that building have routed and moved out. And now it comes to the advance phase. This is where we kick butt. So we're gonna have Sergeant Wright here. He's gonna, PFC, he's actually he's a private here. He's gonna advance in here. And it shows us the results. We've got a 28% chance that we're going to ambush them. 8% they're going to ambush us. And the odds are favor close combat. 98% chance that we're going to get a good result here. So we're going to advance in. And now we can have other things advance move too. I think that's okay. They haven't recovered yet. Let's have them advance just to get a little bit of cover into the woods here. That sounds good. And then the combat's going to get resolved as we click the result here. So you move everybody in the advance phase. And then the kind of the melee combat gets executed. So we're going to see what happens down here. We got a big cluster of German. Nice. We killed those units. Oh, our leader got killed. That's not good. But they failed a morale check, I think. Some of this stuff I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of kind of calculations that are going on behind the scenes. Stuff still going on. We still haven't taken the building. Now, these units are coming up to try to reinforce it. Those units are kind of moving out a little bit. Hopefully we have enough left to take this. I think that the death of our leader here is probably not a good thing. We do have a fire phase. Let's see if we can, can we get these units in the open. We cannot. We can fire right here, I think. So let's see if that works. Missed. Not good. All right. Can these guys fire? No, they can't. They're out of range. How about our sniper? Can he do anything? No. Out of range. Okay, but these guys, I think... Right click away. I think these guys can fire. They're in melee, so they can't. All right, so I think that takes us to the end of the fire phase. Right now, our victory points are minus one, probably because we lost our leader. But hopefully, we have enough strength in here with these elite units. Yeah, they're routing. They're running out. They're routed. Looking pretty good here for us, I think. Depends on what some of these other units do. Advance phase. Ah, oh, they're coming in. Gah. Okay, that's not good. Melee phase, but we're not in the same hex. So I don't know if melee happens there. Hopefully we can get them on the next turn. Oh, killed. That was the German unit. Good. The elite units have stood. And our squad down here has rallied. So lots of stuff going on behind the scenes. Now it's our move and fire phase again. Excellent. So let's have... Kind of making this up now because we're not going by the tutorial. Let's have our unit move up here. We're going to have them walk. And then we're going to have them... Oop, they took fire and they missed... Now, let's have them open fire on this building. Missed. Okay, that doesn't help. But I, th I think we're doing pretty good here. We could have this unit advance. Let's, yeah, let's actually see if this works. We'll have them advance. We're going to have them walk up. Because I don't think they can really fire. And this unit seems to be busy. So, excellent. So, they're up there. Now, here, I think we can just have them fire here. Looks like we got some pretty good results here. So, let's have them open up here. Weak and broken, weak and excellent. German defenders are struggling here in the face of our elite squads. Let's have our other infantry unit here run up here. They probably can't fire very well, but they might be able to. Oh, they took fire. Well, there's units over here in the woods. That's right, I forgot about them. Let's see if we can pin them down a little bit here. They stood, yeah, their ground, not good. Now this unit can also get into action here. I think you're gonna be too late to do much, but we'll bring them over here. And this veteran unit is... Ah, I should have sent the leader to rally them. But all in all, I think we're doing okay here. They've moved in fire. Okay. And they can't move. That's going to have to be an advance after combat. So let's end this phase. I think we can take the building and we win. In this first scenario, right, um, it's not designed to, uh, I think, be particularly hard. Yeah, the Germans have completely routed. They're running away. And I think that's it. I think we just won, right? We got 30 victory points. Maybe we have to advance here now. I guess we have to take the square. Can we advance right here. Yep, in we go. And that should do it. Let's have them advance in here as well. Get inside the building. 
And let's have this unit over here just advance up here just for kicks and giggles. I don't think they're going to do much. And let's hold our ground. And I think that ends the scenario and we got it. There we go. Cool. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense of what gameplay is like. Now, again, we haven't seen any vehicles. We haven't seen any support weapons like machine guns. And I think in this five scenario playtest version, they add in those types of things as it goes forward. So we're going to stop here to give you a sense. I'd love to hear what you think about what you've seen so far down in the comments down below. I'm going to try to come back and probably do one more or two more scenarios with this playtest version over the course of the next couple of days. But I'd love to hear what you think about it. I'm quite excited for this. I mean, I think that, you know, this type of tactical combat game is really fun. I like the accessibility of it. Uh, I like the idea of the 60 turn campaigns and the scope and scale seems really impressive as well as as they look forward, they're talking about, okay, so this is the core game with the Russian, German and US forces. They're going to add desert, jungle, paratroopers, close air support. So you can see that, you know, the vision for the future of this game, once the core game is out, could be quite spectacular. So I'm a, I am a kind of uh, maybe eagerly optimistic for this one to see it kind of progress through its development and to for a release later in 2022 but anyway thank you so much for watching let me know what you think down below in the comments and i'll put a link up here to the next video as soon as it is ready thank you again for watching take care everybody